Currently, I'm in a role with Novo Nordisk US as Associate Director of E-Marketing and Relationship Marketing. Um, in that role, I am leading an effort, um, obviously collaborating with a, a whole variety of stakeholders within the organization to uh, reinitiate and take to the next level uh, the organization's efforts as far as leveraging the internet as well as um, both on the healthcare professional and patient side of the businesses establishing ourselves in terms of relationship marketing. So um, I think there are two classes of risks that we're involved with. Um, the primary risks are those that we're always up against as an industry. Uh, we have to be careful about off-label communications. Um, we have to make sure that we're, we're being responsible as far as adverse event reporting is concerned. And also we have to make sure that we have fair balance on our products. Um, these are all dilemmas that we grapple with even with traditional media. And um, we have to really stay in touch with our, not stay in touch, but collaborate with our regulatory and legal uh, stakeholders within our, our organizations as well as continue to seek feedback from the regulatory agencies in our respective countries to make sure that we're approaching this in the proper manner. And then of course the, what I, the secondary risks I think that are involved are those of we as an industry being marginalized in many of the conversations that are taking place right now in social networks and blogs as well as with tagging. Um, we've got to find a way to, be, to become a responsible member of these communities um, so that we are there to bring value to those conversations. Um, there's a lot of um, irresponsible conversations that are going on that are um, not properly balanced from a clinical and a scientific standpoint. And I think that as a member of the pharma healthcare ecosystem, that it's incumbent upon us to figure out ways to responsibly be in these conversations in order to balance the communications environment. both are the case. The opportunity is that uh, Web 2.0 gives us the opportunity to engage with and speak to our customers in an authentic, um, a non-commercial, and a, um, a trusting voice. The nature of community is that we need to learn to speak more as an individual and a community member than as a cold corporate entity. On the other hand, uh, the risk that's involved is that if we approach the community uh, in an attempt to sell things, in an attempt to be um, an overarching authority, what we will do is we will alienate the community um, and frankly they'll kick us out. You know, there have always been the three C's of the internet, um, content, commerce, and community. Um, certainly as business people, we're driven towards the commerce, but I think that one of the key things that differentiates Web 2.0 from Web 1.0 is that 2.0 is based on trust, transparency, and community, as well as um, information, support, and service, which is the content side of it. And so, in order to be a valued and respected member of the community, we really have to approach this new phase of the internet from the standpoint of wanting to earn our credibility as a member of the community. Kind of the major categories that you could group Web 2.0 in would be social networks, uh, blogs, uh, there's tagging and bookmarking, um, those are the major ones. Then you get into rich media, YouTube, and those sorts of things. Right now, when we look at um, the proliferation of healthcare-related executions in the Web 2.0 space, what we're seeing mostly are social networks and blogs. I think that because that's where our customers are, that that's where we need to learn to need. We need to learn to be there in an appropriate manner. So as you might uh, realize, Novo Nordisk is an organization that very much espouses the triple bottom line, the idea of um, social responsibility, economic viability, and environmental sustainability. 
And so um, we have a website, it's a non-branded, patient-oriented site called Changing Life with Diabetes in the United States. Um, it, we decided to use this platform um, as a means of building what we call the Voices of Diabetes blog. This blog is a platform that allows people with diabetes to share their stories about how they deal with, cope with, and approach their diabetes. Um, we also are using this platform to espouse the principles, what we call the Dawn Principles, which are based on the Diabetes Attitude um, Wishes and Needs Survey that Novo Nordisk um, is involved with. Mm -hmm. And so we found it to be a very successful endeavor. Uh, we've generated over 200 stories uh, in the space of about, I think, seven months in 2007. I think a key thing that we're learning is that there, there is definitely something to be said for using the resources that we have as an organization to enable participation and engagement between various of our customers. Um, it's the idea of providing a service in addition to the brand that helps people not only to use our products well, but to really treat their um, ailments well. There is not a visible link at all with our products, but I think that in this new age of marketing, um, there are objectives around trust and transparency that accrue a benefit to the brand at large, the corporate brand that then rubs off on our product brands that I think is very useful because we as an industry are in a bit of an embattled state right now where our, many of our key stakeholders believe that we're only about selling product. And um, I know myself, 20 years in this industry and very many of my colleagues throughout the industry, we came in this industry, yeah, to sell product, but also because we did feel that this is an industry to be in that makes a real contribution to society in the way of helping there to be generally better health in mm -hmm. the society. And so I think that Web 2.0 gives us an opportunity to meet that objective. These new technologies um, and innovative ways of doing marketing are always, um, you kind of get stars in your eyes about them, but I think it's really key for us to remember that um, we should not be doing these things just because they are sexy to do, but because it provides real value uh, to our customers as well as to our businesses and our stakeholders. So you know, I always enjoy um, coming to Europe and um, engaging with the community of practitioners here. Um, I've actually found um, this to be quite a good conference. The presentations have been good. Um, increasingly when I come to these conferences, the networking that occurs between the discussions at lunch and at dinner and networking breaks also is quite beneficial. Um, and I can tell you I've got five pages of notes and all kinds of underlined ideas to take back to the office um, to help us with Good. the things that we're doing. So I'm enjoying myself quite a bit.